Okay, so we're continuing with basis and dimension. So we were here. Okay. There are an infinite number of bases for R2. Any set of two non-collinear vectors is a basis. Okay, so non-collinear, well, collinear means in the same line, I guess. So if you're collinear, two vectors are collinear, then they are multiples. One is a multiple of the other, right? So they point in the same direction. So any set of two vectors that don't point in the same, any set of two vectors that aren't a multiple of each other is a basis. We may wonder whether there are bases for R2 with a different number of elements, perhaps one or three. Well, there are not. Consider a possible one element basis V1 for R2. This set cannot generate the entire vector space since the span of S is simply alpha V1, where alpha is an element of R, which is either a straight line if V1 is not zero, or the origin. And then here's a picture of it, right? In either case, there are many vectors in R2 that are not generated by S, and it fails to be a basis. So here's a vector that's not generated by S, by this S, which is just this line. So what if we had consider a three element set, V1, V2, V3? Well, it might generate all of R2, but it will not be literally independent. If we want to solve alpha V1 plus beta V2 plus gamma V3 equals zero, we would be looking at solving we were looking at solving um, so now in this case they've chosen they've said that uh, v1 is v1 is x1 y1 it's called x1 y1 so it's like alpha x1 y1 plus beta x2 y2 plus gamma x3 y3 equals the zero vector okay now that can be written as a matrix equation, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, times by alpha, beta, gamma, equals 0, 0, okay? That's the equation that we're going to try and solve. No matter what the components of the vectors vi are, so no matter what, x, what the xi and yi are, upon Gauss reducing this matrix, we will find at most two pivots, right? Because you can only get one pivot per row, and there's only two rows. So we'll find at most two pivots, which means that one of the variables is free because there's three variables, right? So two pivots, two or less pivots, three variables, so there's a free variable, and so there are an infinite number of solutions. So S is linearly dependent, because there are non-trivial solutions to this, uh, non-trivial solutions to this equation, and so it's not a basis. Okay, so this means then, this sort of argument shows that for any vector space V, all its bases, is, all its bases, have the same basis as bases as the plural of bases. It's very irritating. Basis, but you can say basis. If any vector space V, all its bases have the same number of elements. Okay. I mean, of course, the, you know, if you have a three element set, we said if we have a three element set, then you're gonna, it's not gonna be, in, it's not gonna be independent. Of course, the same thing applies to a four, four element set, right? It's the same kind of argument, five element, whatever. Any set bigger than two. So now I have a definition. The dimension of a vector space is the number of elements in any of its bases. So you perhaps already know that the dimension of R2 is 2, and now we have one way of thinking of that is to say that, well, the dimension of R2 is 2 because any basis for R2 has exactly two vectors. Okay. And I think I will... Ah, then there's a little note here, by the way, that this, all this stuff doesn't really apply, or it gets more complicated in the case of infinite dimensional vector spaces. Um, and we do actually have an example of an infinite, infinite dimensional vector space. An example of an infinite dimensional vector space is R to the R, right? So this sort of, this stuff about dimension and stuff doesn't really apply to R to the R. And we're not going to talk about this in this course. Okay.